فرحان from the UAE السلام عليكم شيخ السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته شيخ I have a question yes uh, I'm basically from India and wanted to understand that in certain masajids uh, especially after the Friday Salah they uh, read the Salam to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the microphone in a loud voice what is the ruling for this and what is the correct practice okay any more questions uh, that's all uh, at the moment okay and I would answer it if, if yes. you could kindly give any reference to the Quran or the Sahih Hadith uh, that will help me to 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 spread the, the message okay brother Farhan from the Emirates had uh, a question which is a basic question and he's asking for the reference from the Quran from the Sunnah so that he can argue with people. I'll give you a very easy reference, Brother Farhan. Sahih al-Imam Muslim, Mother Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, whoever innovates anything in our religion that is not part of it, it is rejected. So anyone not only offering the rud sharif, as you call it, in your country, not only offering the salutation to the Prophet ﷺ through the microphone, any act you see me or any other person doing, you should ask, is this part of Islam? If yes, then can you provide me with the evidence? If I don't have any evidence, then it is innovated in the sense that, did the Prophet ﷺ ever offered the salutation upon himself loudly or in congregation after fard prayer or after Friday prayer there would be no Muslim to claim this even those who are doing it if you ask them is there any book hadith Bukhari Muslim Abu Dawood Tirmidhi Nasai Ibn Majah etc that is authentic referring to us that the Prophet had ever done this, that the companions had ever done this, that the tabi'een had ever done this, that the tabi'i tabi'een had ever done this, and the answer would be no. So how do I dare and come and say, yes, but this is good, we, sh we should do it. Do you know more than the Prophet, والسلام, his companions, the tabi'een and tabi'i tabi'een? Yes or no? He said, no, astaghfirullah, I don't know more than them. In this case, if they didn't do it, is it part of the religion where Allah said, the Almighty, in verse 3, uh, chapter 5, اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم. Today I have completed your religion. Is it, or was it part of the religion at the time of the Prophet? He said, no, they didn't do it. And th in this case, we tell this person that if the Prophet didn't do it, and it's not part of the religion, in this case, it is a new religion. So those who give the adhan, for example, in Turkey, in Syria, in some of the North African countries, you find them that 15 minutes before the adhan of Fajr, they recite Ayat al-Kursi by the microphones. Qul huwa Allahu ahad, the salutation on the Prophet in a melodic way, as if they're chanting nasheed. And then the adhan comes, and after the adhan they say, the dua also loud. What are you doing? He says, this is good. We're teaching people. This is dhikr Allah. Did the Prophet do it or not? This is the one million euro question. Beside, now, if you open the door for innovation, some says, Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Yes, he is our master. He is our Sayyid. But can anyone in his sound mind insist on using the word Sayyid in everything, even in Salah. So he says, At-tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibat, As-salamu alayka ayyuha al-nabi. And he says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahdu la shaykh, wa ashhadu anna sayyidana muhammadan abdu wa rasooluh. Can you say this in Salah? Or even better, can you say this in the adhan? Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, ashhadu anna sayyidana muhammadan rasoolullah. Or would this nullify your adhan? Innovation is endless. 
deen of Islam is limited. So you cannot worship Allah Azza wa Jal by adding or subscri subtracting anything you don't like. This is the religion of Allah. So those who innovate, those who insist on giving a lecture before Jum'ah, and then the adhan comes, and then the, the, the imam who was lecturing for an hour in his native language comes and gives two speeches in Arabic. He doesn't know what it means. The audience do not know what it means. And then he makes the salah. In countries that they may pray uh, Jumu'ah, and after the prayer is over, they all pray for rak'ahs. What are you praying? They say, we praying dhuhr. Dhuhr? Then what were you praying before? He said, no, this Jumu'ah is not valid because the Imam, the original ruler is not here and he's the only one who can pray. What nonsense is this? So you find innovations in every place and every time because people are away from the Sunnah. Who's prospering? Who's benefiting from this? These are the rulers, these are the imams, the, these are the leaders of innovation, of deviancy, who are milking the masses for money by controlling them with these superstitions and nonsense that are not related to Islam. This is why when we tell people come to the Quran, come to the Sunnah with the understanding of the Prophet his companions and the, and the Tabi'een, you will find someone blocking this call and saying, no, this is not permissible. You cannot understand Islam on your own. Who should I understand it through? He said, only through me. You're not allowed to learn Islam or to worship Allah. I was in Syria decades ago, and I went to a masjid, and the masjid's imam was a well-known sheikh at the time, and he's the leader of a tariqah, of the Sufis. And he said in public lecture that you cannot worship Allah except through the Prophet ﷺ. And you cannot reach the Prophet ﷺ except through me. So when you pray, when you worship Allah, you have to always envision me because I'm the mirror that reflects your worship to the Prophet ﷺ and he reflects, what is this? What kind of a religion is this? This is how they make money. And this is how they control their masses, or if you wish, their herds, and they manipulate them and play with them as they wish. So what they are doing after Jum'ah, what they are doing before uh, the Adhan, what some of them are doing after the conclusion of the Salat, they put their hand over the head, fearing that they would uh, fly away, or when they hear the Adhan and they uh, hear the uh, name of the Prophet Assam, they kiss their thumbs three times and wipe over the ears and they claim that whoever does this would not become blind or uh, would have illness in his eyes. All of this is baseless. If there is anything authentic as such, do you think that we would not call people to it? We are calling people to abide by the Sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, in the very smallest things. Let alone the mega things. So even when it comes to the beard or the way you eat or the way you give salam or the way you sit in a, 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 a prayer or the way you fold your hands or raise your every single detail, we invite people to follow the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Wouldn't we also invite them to such things if they were from the sunnah? So all what the people need is to broaden their thinking and minds, not be sheep following their shepherds who are dragging them to uh, uh, innovation to let loose of what they had inherited from their fathers and forefathers of fo following deviant sects and schools of thought and uh, shiuch who do not even know Arabic and their moral conduct is at the very lowest they have to expand their horizons follow the Quran learn the Quran, follow the Prophet ﷺ, Sunnah, and love it with all their heart, and then, inshallah, they will be guided.